Right. Hopefully everyone's had a chance to uh, stretch their legs and whatnot. Um, I made some changes to the prefab while I was gone. Or while you were gone, while I was sort of gone and then sort of that. Uh, let's put this display back on. And I'll, uh, I'll show you what's happened. <coughs> Um, I uh, I nearly finished it. I nearly got sort of finished with what I wanted to do. I just started tweaking the highlights. The reason I've done this off camera is not because I'm being precious and I don't want you to see what I'm doing with this. Of course, I want to share with you everything that I'm doing with this. Um, but it's mainly because uh, perfect, excellent, good man panda. Um, no, the reason I've done this is because the, the stuff I'm doing here is a slightly more advanced form of modding. I didn't do what I've just done here, which is um, highlighting with a different object other than the um, just duplicating it. Duplicating the highlight is by far and away the easiest way of doing it. What I've actually got here is a separate object. In fact, I've got two separate objects um, to create an effect using one of uh, Tim Wee's uh, hollow, uh, hollow button highlights. So, um, and, and that I didn't do until I did the iPhone, which was my 11th, 10th module, something like that. So it's not necessarily something you need to know straight away. And there's already so much to take in this evening um, that I felt if I did that as well, it might just sort of feel a bit much. But to... Um, Oh, brilliant. Panda's going to... You're going to say what's for it. Excellent. Glad to, glad to hear. Um, so what I've essentially done there is I've, I've changed the selectable. Instead of being one of Ash's lovely buttons, I've changed it into just a basic quad. And I've made it um, transparent. So you... Which means you can't see it. Of course you know what transparent means. Um, on, to, on top of that... Uh, so it's essentially acting like a button. It's just a button that you can't see now. Um, it would have been similar to the buttons, but I needed to use a hollow highlight because what the highlight does, it actually, because it's a duplicate of the object, it would show the whole thing. So I've actually now got a highlight, which is a box. And then I've just plonked the text over the top, and I've done that four times there. So it looks a little bit more souvenir-y right now. Um, but functions in basically the same way. The last tweaks I was just putting on there were just making little edits to the highlight right there. Um, I'm not wild about the fact that it's wider than it is tall, but there's not, sadly, an awful lot I can do about that. Um, and also the fact that you've got this sort of empty space on the on the slightly shorter words, which is well, a, a good thing that these words are actually all fairly long. I might just, for a point of reference, get the shortest word, which is Tamandua, or possibly Tellurian, and just see what that looks like. Um, mm -hmm. so I don't think that's going to look... Too, too, too awful right there. Uh, no, that looks okay. And what I was just doing before you, uh, before I turn the stream back on, was that I was just pulling the highlights up a little bit so that they come over the top of the um, the outside of the component. I think I've actually put it up a little bit too high there, so I'm just going to um, drop it that down a little bit. The four highlights, put them down like that. That seems not unreasonable. That doesn't look too bad from the side. If you got really deep down into the module, you'd see that it's floating above it. But um, ah, but you see him cutting into the module there as well. You see, so maybe maybe it does need to come up just a little bit more again. And this is one of the fine tuning processes that you um, you'll get used to doing this sort of thing a lot. <laughs> um, Anyway, this wasn't really... Oh, here we go. I was going to finish this, otherwise it'll, it'll bother me. That should be about right. Um, this wasn't really going to be part of the tutorial today. Um, but I figured since I'm making a model like that, that doesn't look unreasonable. Of course, one thing I could do is actually just make these highlights a bit smaller. No, not smaller enough since Tuck Demand is not That'll do. That'll do for now. I can tweak that on my own time uh, later. So, that's what I was up to while you were um, away. Or sort of away, but not away. So, we're nearly done with this prefab because it's quite a simple...
prefab design. It's four things you can click and this little light at the top. Um, and uh, right, I'm going to show you now how we can get lights. I've got a question mark over whether or not I want to make it. I think I do want to make it an actual light for myself, but for the purposes of this, I will show you how to do blend unlit. So I'm going to save it because I haven't saved for a while. I'm going to pop it in here. Um, and I'm going to create a new object. So remember I was talking about earlier on about I've got words now and I've got ancillary. I'm now going to create a new one, which is... Um, oh, phone is going to load power mode. We'll pin you at this time. That soon, never mind. That soon, text still visible. We'll pin you this time. That soon, never mind. Perfect then. Okay. Oh, ask back soon. I beg your pardon. Thank you very much. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I would have gone the rest of the stream with that there. <laughs> I'll point that out. Um, okay, thank you for, for spotting that. So, we're going to create a new object. And I want this to be a, a sort of round light. So, I'm going to go uh, 3D object and cylinder. Again, it's going to be massive. Um, so, we're going to shrink it down with our 0 0.1 little, little trick there. That's still going to be too big, so I'm going to come down even further, probably to about 0 0.025. 0 0.25 and 0 0.25. That looks about right. Now, the cylinder by default is always taller than it is wide, because it's a cylinder. So your y-axis is going to have to be key significantly reduced. So I normally take it down by a factor, another factor of 10, um, possibly more than that, to get it to like that in 2 fibers. 2 is probably about right there. Um, my positions, are, as usual, I'm going to reset just so it's centred uh, on the mod <laughs> professional screen, behave. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to drag it up now, and I'm going to do this manually. And what I generally try and do, I try and get it to roughly where I want, and then because OCD, I will fine-tune it like that. So it ends up being 0 0.06. I now need to drag it up on this axis here, the y-axis, just so it's poking out the top. There we go. And again, 0 0.01, looks about right there. And it's already in the center right there. So again, as default, this cylinder, um, we're just going to call this LED, will have a standard material on it right here. We don't want a standard material because Scatane can't read standard materials or it can possibly break them. Um, now for this one, I'm going to use a different folder. We've seen where I've gone in the, the standard colors before. Um, and this time I'm going to go into this one called Unlit Colors. Now these are the standard ones that I've already got. Black light, green light, orange light, red light, white light. Um, you'll notice when I... Actually, you might not notice. When I play this, when the lights are off, you can see the text because of the text material. But at the moment, you can't see the cylinder that I've created at the top while the lights are off. Um, because it's using a, a standard material. Now that would be the same if it was using the... Um, KT diffused tint material that we used for the for the backgrounds and we played around with earlier on. Um, what we are going to do though is give it one of these for now. Now these are preset already, um, and you can um, you can use these these three here. I'm going to actually uh, create a few more um, in a, in a little little. Actually, I probably won't. I'll probably do it a different way. Um, but for now, let's just pop green light onto there. You'll notice this has got the shader KT Blend Unlit. So before we would have gone KT Mobile Diffuse Tint. Now we're going to go KT Blend Unlit. Now you'll notice a very obvious difference with this. Is that when the lights are off, that light stays on. So that's a really useful um, little shader material to have there. So if you want something to glow in the dark, you can do that quite easily. You'll also notice though it's a bit more complicated because of the shader type, the blend unlit, you can't just tint it. You have to actually apply a texture to it. So the way I've done these is that I've um, for these unlit colours, I've actually given them I actually created a texture in uh, in Photoshop, I think. All you need is a two by I use a two by two pixel colour um, and create green, orange, red, white, and I've got a black one as well. Uh, and then you can just set the textures in, in here. I tend to set them both. There are other ways of doing it, but to my knowledge, there isn't a way of just creating a basic coloured texture in Unity. I'm sure if I'm incorrect on that, Ash will point it out to me. But for me, that's 
far and away the easiest way of doing it. I just go into Photoshop and create something um, different. I'm just going to make these a little smaller because I'm not entirely happy with the size. I think it's too big. That's a bit better. Um, so that's my LED. Now, that is going to be a variety of different colours. And um, I'm going to use a light on this. Now, I'm not going to show you how to use lights because that's getting... Um, essentially too, too complex for the, for a, a beginner basic stuff. There's stuff that you like to make it look more fancy um, later on, but it's not really necessary. And I, I, again, if I, if I start adding it in now, then it's going to get complex. If you can write shaders, yes, there's a better way, but you have to be able to write shaders for that, right? Uh, I, I cannot write shaders. Um, I don't know about anyone else on stream. Uh, but I certainly can't. 